Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision lesson. Now when it comes to question number three of the language paper two exam, you should get a little bit of deja vu. You should be thinking, hmm, I've kind of seen this type of question before. And that's true because question number three is very similar to question number two of language paper one. In other words, this question asks you to look at a really specific section of one of the extracts and then talk about how the writer uses language to convey whatever the keywords of the question are. Literally exactly the same technique as is required for question number two in paper one, okay? So this question should feel a little bit more easy and a little bit more fluid. If you're currently in your 11, you've already done language paper one, so you're in your paces, okay? So question number three is just very, very similar in terms of what the examiners are looking for to question two of paper one. Now, before I go into showing you guys an example of a model response for this question in paper two, what I want to show you guys is just the general framework and the general steps you should take when answering this question. Now, remember, the first thing to bear in mind with question number three, and this is why it's so similar to question two in paper one, is that it is the language question. You are expected to demonstrate your subject's terminology awareness when it comes to language, but also when you then select the bits of evidence from just one source, so you don't have to do any comparison for this question. You're looking at just one source, you're selecting the bits of evidence, you wanna try and also zoom in on particular words and do some word level analysis, okay? Now, when it comes to the amount of time you should spend on this question as it's worth slightly more marks, okay? So it's worth 12 marks. You should spend roughly 13 minutes on this question. Try to aim to write, if not two, three pill paragraphs. And of course, it tests your AO2, your awareness of subject terminology. Now, when it comes to this actual question, you're always given specific line numbers to focus in on. Of course, take the evidence from just those line numbers, pay attention to that, and write between two to three pill paragraphs. And of course, when you're given those line numbers, don't take one bit of evidence and then another bit of evidence from the same sentence or from two sentences that follow each other. Show your examiner a range of examples, okay? Pick something maybe from the beginning of that section Maybe something from the middle, something from the end, okay? Try not to take uh, just a second, you know, one sentence, then the next sentence as your evidence because it comes across as a little bit lazy. Also, for this question, I would suggest in terms of just approaching it, I personally really like the simplicity of appeal paragraph, okay? Just because it's a simple framework doesn't mean you can't layer in complex points. Again, as you see from my model answer, which I'm gonna go into, you're gonna see that I developed my points, okay? But I really like a pill paragraph structure. And what do I mean by that? You're only looking at one source, therefore you're asked to look at how language is conveyed in whatever keywords. So you start off simply with your point. Refer back to the question, allude to the keywords in the question. Second step in your peel paragraph is of course your evidence. Quote directly from your evidence and try to embed your quotations if you can. The next E in your peel paragraph is your explanation. Identify techniques. Now this is your AO2, okay? So to get those AO2 marks, when you select a bit of evidence, say, is it simile? Is it a metaphor? Is it alliteration? Is it personification? Whatever it is, mention that literary technique, but then also within the quotation that you selected, follow up by zooming in on one particular word and then doing some word level analysis. What I mean by that is say, for example, you get a quotation as big as a bear, right? Then you say the writer uses the simile to convey how large this object is. Then when you zoom in and do your word level analysis, you'll then say the noun bear conveys to me just how large this thing that they're describing is. It's almost like an animal or a large animal, okay? That's your word level analysis. Then you finish off your peel paragraph by linking back to the question's keywords. That's really it in your peel paragraph. It's really simple, straightforward, but you layer in the complexity in each step. Now, the final thing, if you are still at this stage hazy on what AO2 is and what language terminology you, not, you need to talk about, these are the really, really common techniques that I would suggest look for when you're answering this question in your paper two exam. Firstly, remember to consider and to talk about traditional literary techniques, okay? So this is your alliteration, your sibilance, metaphor, simile, semantic field, which is my personal favorite because it sounds super clever, but it's actually really straightforward. A semantic field is just two more words that belong to the same category, okay? Roses, daffodils, lilies. They are words that belong to the semantic field of flowers. Really straightforward, it sounds really clever, but actually it's quite easy to spot, okay? And of course, the final language technique that you will always find in text and writers love using it is oxymoron, which is opposite words, okay? 
that's your general literary techniques that you're talking about when you're taking out a quotation from the extract. However, you then need to zoom in and do your word level analysis. Use these words for your word level analysis. Nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, and pronouns. If you're not clear, a noun is a place personal thing, verb is a doing word, an adjective is describes a noun, an adverb is it describes a verb, and finally a pronoun is I, me, he, she, they, it, okay? Now, when you are selecting your techniques, right? So this is for your language analysis. You're selecting, say, for example, alliteration, then you zoom in on a noun. Always in your explanation, talk about how this has connotations of, this um, has associations of whatever, okay? Try it when you're analyzing, say, here's my evidence. Um, as we can see, this sibilance, as well as this verb, has connotations of what images it portray in your head, okay? This is really, really good language terminology to use and this is really good uh, ambitious vocabulary to use in your analysis but that's really it to be honest when it comes to the language question so what i'm going to do is now i'm going to walk you through a model response that i've prepared for a past paper question so let's look at how to answer question number three and this is the question that appeared in the june 2020 exam okay so of course remember that these papers that I go over by aqa are available to download from their website so if you wanted to practice it independently which i would encourage you to do so Download it after you watch this video. Now remember, question number three should come as a bit of a relief because you're asked to just look at just one source. I'm gonna walk you through an example that I've prepared. And of course, remember that in this paper, you would have gotten these two sources. The modern source called Touch in the Void, published in 1988. This source basically describes the experience of this guy, Joe Simpson, he's climbing and, um, or rather descending a mountain after he's climbed with his companion, Simon. However, he's broken his leg, therefore this is a really excruciating de descent for him, right? So he's like really, really struggling, he's in lots of pain, and Simon, who's helping lower him, he's actually not very careful when he's lowering Joe, right? So this is only adding to Joe's pain. However, of course, in source B, which is the Victorian source, the similar theme is to do with mountaineering and climbing. However, Gertrude Bell, who's climbing with Marius, okay, so she's a novice, she's kind of new to this, therefore she hires a local guide. Actually, she has a really, really pleasant experience climbing these dangerous mountains, the Alps, but also descending them, okay? So whilst she ends by telling us, you know, they managed to get down safely, Marius was really gentle when he was helping her, the ending of this source leaves us in a bit of a cliffhanger. As I mentioned, I'm not gonna read through this extract. If you want to, read this um, in your own time. However, what I want to show you guys is how to approach question number three, which is the language question. And in this case, within this particular paper, this question asks you to look at just the modern source, okay? Now, this question is very, very similar in terms of your approach to question two in paper one, in the sense that you're asked to talk about language and a really particular part of the extract, okay? In this case, you're asked to look at source A from lines 23 to 31, okay? So you're looking at source A, just this little section. And my suggestion is try to aim to write at least two, if not three pill paragraphs, taking evidence only from this section. Take something from the beginning and something from the end if you're only going for two paragraphs or something from the beginning, middle and end if you're going for your three peel paragraphs. Make sure it's purely language techniques that you're picking out, okay? So of course in this part of the extract, you know, he's describing how he's in so much pain. Um, you know, he's hearing his knee, making all of these horrendous noises. And so what I'm going to be finding are bits of evidence that indicate that the writer, going back to this question, okay, because we're asked to talk about how the writer uses language to describe how he feels. I'm gonna be looking for three separate bits of evidence that go into my three pill paragraphs showing the pain that he feels, okay? And what I decided to go for was this metaphor, this idea of how a wave of nausea, sickness swept over him? I also thought this interesting onomatopoeia was really, really powerful. The fact that he could feel his, or rather we could hear his knee kinking and it lets off this sickening, grisly crunch, okay? So the crunch, really powerful onomatopoeia showing that he's in excruciating pain. And finally, also the use of the rule of three here, how he reacts to this pain. I pressed my face into the snow, gritted my teeth and waited, okay? So he uses rule of three, listing these different verbs, illustrating his intense pain and agony. So now I'm gonna show you how I wrote out these responses in my model answer, okay? So this is my first paragraph. And as I mentioned with this question, just aim to write three simple peel paragraphs, point evidence explanation link, that's what peel means. 
And remember the bulk of your marks, this is where you get in your AO2, goes in your explanation. This is where you talk about language technique and also do some zooming in and word level analysis. So here's my first pill paragraph relating to how the writer, Joe Simpson, uses language to describe how he feels. So here's my opening point. Firstly, the writer vividly uses language to describe the excruciating pain he feels as he is lowered down the mountain. Excruciating means intense, horrible. That's my opening pain, uh, point. Here's my evidence. He felt a wave of nausea as he descended. That's my evidence. I'm keeping it simple. Now here's my explanation where I'm going to unpack it. The author employs this powerful metaphor language to show how all-consuming his agony was. So now I'm describing the language devices that the author has used. And then now I'm going to pick something from this quotation and zoom in and do some word level analysis. The abstract noun nausea, so this is an abstract noun, reveals that the pain was so extreme that he felt sick. So here, in my explanation, I've talked about metaphor, I've also zoomed in and done some word level analysis talking about the writer's use of a noun and how this illustrates the pain that he feels. Now, I'll then link it back to the question. Thus, it's evident that the writer is completely overpowered by the pain he is feeling as he descends the mountain. That's my first full pill paragraph, point, evidence, explanation, and link. I'm gonna do this twice more. I would suggest doing a minimum for this 12 marker. Try to do a minimum of at least two points, if not three, okay? Aim to do three, but two if you're not speedy enough. So here's my second pill paragraph. Secondly, Simpson seems quite anxious about his broken leg. This is because it is making odd noises. Again, here's my opening point. Here's my evidence. His leg let out a sickening, grisly crunch. So that's my second bit of evidence. I'm working through these line numbers, picking something from the beginning. Now this is something from the middle in terms of evidence. Here's my explanation where I'm now adding in my AO2 observation, okay? This is subject terminology that I'm gonna re refer to. The author employs onomatopoeia, sound words, be careful about spelling for that, to evocatively, to powerfully convey the terrible sounds the broken bones in his leg were making. The verb crunch, now I'm zooming in, describes how his leg seemed broken and limp, and this made him more worried. That's my explanation. I've talked about onomatopoeia language and also zoomed in on this verb. Now I'll link it back. Hence, the author seems anxious about his leg as it is making strange noises. That's my link back to the question. Now here's my final peel paragraph. Finally, it's clear that the writer feels powerless against the pain as he descends. As he went down the mountain, he pressed his face in the snow, he gritted his teeth and he waited. So I opened my point and then I've added my evidence where I'm talking about the rule of three. Okay, pressed, gritted and waited, that's my evidence. Here's my explanation. The writer uses the rule of three to illustrate how much pain the writer felt. The verb waited, zooming in, reveals that even if he felt agony, he could do nothing but bear the pain. That's my explanation, here's my link. Consequently, the author shows us that he felt quite powerless against his pain. It's clear that he gave up trying to control the agony he felt. And that's really it when it comes to question number three. You should feel hopefully a little bit more confident with this question because you've already practiced it for the language paper one exam. So you're simply applying the same skills that you brought to question two in paper one to this particular exam question. Try to aim to write a minimum of two pill paragraphs, if not three, for this 12 mark response.